Sustainability. It's a word you hear a lot these days when it comes to the environment. For many, it's just that, a word. Many more don't even know what that word means. But soon, it will be more than a word. Sustainability is becoming an organizing principle for how government and businesses run. We're here at the National Academies because in 2010, the Environmental Protection Agency asked the Academies to help it create a framework to incorporate sustainability in everything it does. The EPA picked the National Academies because of its long and distinguished history of providing independent expert advice. Created by Abraham Lincoln in 1863, the academies bring America's leading scientists, medical doctors, and engineers together to help solve some of our biggest national problems. Sustainability is not a new concept for the EPA. The agency has been developing sustainable programs for years. What has been lacking is a common set of principles and tools to guide the decision-making process throughout the agency. The inspiration for this project comes from the Academy's Red Book on Risk Assessment, which has guided the EPA in much of its work for more than 25 years. From this new collaboration comes the Green Book, which will give the EPA and other organizations a way to make sustainability more than a word, to make sustainability real. A committee of the Academies began its work by looking at the history of sustainability. In 1969, the U.S. Congress declared in the National Environmental Policy Act that our national goal is to create and maintain conditions under which humans and nature can exist in productive harmony for present and future generations. This language, which was signed into law by President Nixon in 1970, is now described as sustainability and was reaffirmed in a 2009 executive order by President Obama. To better understand a word, we sometimes look at its opposite, and there's no better example of what a lack of sustainability looks like than the damage and devastation of the Dust Bowls during the Great Depression. From that experience, and countless other examples of unsustainable practices, there's a growing consensus that our health, economy, and security all depend on maintaining a balanced coexistence with our environment. The Green Book shows us one way we can achieve this balance. For the first time, the Green Book provides the EPA a framework to integrate sustainability in everything it does. The first level of the framework outlines a process for the EPA to develop its own vision of sustainability based on the widely accepted Three Pillars model, which includes the environmental, economic, and social dimensions of any decision. From there, the EPA must develop clear objectives, goals, and ways to measure success and then integrate those ideas and values into the culture of the agency. The second level of the framework provides the EPA with a structured process and tools that can be used to assess and manage sustainability in all EPA projects. Many examples of sustainable initiatives across the country are discussed in the Green Book. Sustainability principles are helping to significantly reduce the cost of restoring the Everglades lower energy consumption and cut utility bills with green roofs in Philadelphia, and redevelop Boston's Fairmount Rail Corridor by cleaning up and replacing brownfields with four new rail stations and 2,000 affordable housing units. Sustainability is already more than a word, but with the Green Book, sustainability can now be a guiding principle for everything the EPA does. In these pages, government, industry, and the public now have a common set of terms, and more importantly, practical tools that can be used to deliver the promise of sustainability described by Congress over 40 years ago, serving to resolve inherent conflicts between human activity and nature, leading to more productive harmony for present and future generations. For the National Academies, we thank you for watching.